look at how you would do a substitution integral in Maple. So imagine we had the following two integration problems. The integral of secant squared times the cube root of tangent squared dx, and the integral of x squared over the square root of 8 plus x squared dx. Now if I were just attacking these things as integration problems, well, the first thing I'd do is enter these guys. So let's take a look at this first one. That's the secant of squared times tangent of x quantity squared raised to the one-third power. So that would just means he's been raised to a two-thirds power. So there's the function. I right-click on it, go down to integrate, and Maple spits out the integral of secant squared tangent two-thirds x. It doesn't integrate anything. This means that Maple doesn't know how to integrate this particular problem, and so it simply returns it back. On the other hand, if I were to try the second function, x squared divided by the square root of uh, 8 plus x squared, so there's the function. If I right-click and integrate this, then Maple actually will give me an answer. 1 half x times the square root of 8 plus x squared minus 4 times this. That's the hyperbolic arc sine function, which isn't a function that we've trucked around with very much in this class right here. So sometimes Maple can't do an integral. Other times it will express an integral in terms of functions we're unfamiliar with. Now the way to get around this is to make Maple do a substitution. We have no control over how it does these integrals, but we can allow Maple to do substitutions. And so to do a substitution, we need to load a special package. So we're going to load a package called integration tools. So if we type in integration tools, and we get a list of new functions that we can work around with. And the one that we want to use for substitutions is called change. And so here's how change would work. Let's go up to here and take a look at this first example. This was an integral Maple couldn't work out. So what we can have Maple do is we can have, have Maple make a substitution. So the command is change. You have to tell it what integral you'd like to substitute into. So I'm going to tell it line number two. And then what substitution you'd like to do. Now if it was us, we would try one of the substitutions, either secant or tangent, since this is a secant tangent integral. <coughs> so let's try u equals the tangent of x. And so that's it. Maple can make the substitution and actually integrates right here. Now that's actually kind of fast. It's a little bit hard to see what had happened. And there's a way of getting around this. If you type in capital I and T instead of lowercase i and T, Maple will put an integral. You notice how the integration sign and the D have become grayed out. This is what's called an inert integral. It won't actually evaluate it. It's there to help us see what's going on. Now if I retype this command change line 2 u equals tangent of x, then I can actually see what the substitution would be, that we should have u to the two-thirds, and then the sine squared dx should have been the du. So this is a nice way of actually checking that you're getting a substitution right. Once you have a substitution in this inert form, you can right-click and go over to evaluate from inert, and Maple will then finish the job. So this gets me three-fifths three u to the five-thirds. Of course, I always have to remember to back substitute, and that's easy to do. We'll just go and evaluate it at a point at u equals tangent of x. That was the substitution we made. And so there would be my antiderivative. Now what about the second example? In the second example, when we typed in x squared divided by the square root of 8 plus x squared, and then tried to integrate this by right-clicking on it, we got an answer, but the answer was expressed in terms of a function we don't know. So what I could do is I could go back to this cap lowercase i and turn it into a capital I. Now it's an inert integral. Maple's not going to integrate it. It's going to let us tinker with it however we see fit. So let's make a substitution. So I'm going to type in change. I want to substitute there until integral number 2. Something like this would make a great candidate for a trigonometric substitution. I would substitute theta equals the arc tangent since it's a plus. The variable squared is x and the bottom is the square root of 8 squared. So I could try this particular substitution. If I try this substitution, I get this mess down here. Now that's kind of horrifying right there. And you notice that it hasn't cleaned up the square root. But if I right click and have it simplify this integral symbolically, now it's simplified that down to this into sines and cosines. If I right click and evaluate now, it's able to integrate that using sines and natural logarithms. Of course, I still have the back substitute. So I can go back to evaluate at a point, and I'll type in theta equals the arc tangent of x divided by the square root of 8, since that was my substitution. I get this. I'll right-click and have it simplified a little bit more. And well, it's not pretty, but there's an integral.